Hi, it's Cameron Devady, the founder of Premier Property Club, and I'm here with my good friend, Richard Tagani, who is an expert when it comes to legislation and housing regulation. Now, we're at the Premier Property Club in Canary Wharf at the De Vere Gardens. Now, um, we've got Richard here. So, Richard, uh, just give us a quick background about yourself. How long have you been in legislation? My, my background, uh, th thanks for inviting me tonight, Cam. Uh, my background is as an environmental health officer. Um, I've been qualified as such and got over 20 years experience working in local government, working across the country, uh, from the Midlands down to the South West, and for the last 10 years or so in London. But now operate as an independent environmental health officer, working with landlords, letting agents and others to understand housing regulation. Okay, well, we're um, very honoured to actually have you here at Premier Property Club in Canary Wharf and looking forward to your keynote that you're going to be delivering uh, in 10 minutes or so after we've done this video. Um, for the listeners, for the people that are actually watching this, in terms of legislation, in terms of legalities, can you give us three tips when it comes to HMOs, first of all? Three key tips where you believe that uh, investors can really uh, assess the legislation and really help themselves uh, to actually make sure that they've got a great business going. So what would you suggest? Okay, I'll, I'll try and pick out three key issues. I think the first thing trying to look at HMO developments would be um, considering the planning implications for taking on a new property or taking over an existing HMO from somewhere, someone else uh, across England. You certainly need planning consent for any HMO with seven or more occupants. Increasingly, councils are bringing in what are called HMO or Article 4 directions that can extend planning requirements even down to HMOs with three or more people. So that, that would probably be my first issue. Uh, second issue would have to be licensing. Uh, licensing requirements are extending out across uh, English and Welsh authorities at, at, at quite a rate. Uh, each and every scheme is different and you really need to look back to your own local authority to see what they do in relation to additional selective and mandatory HMO licensing and see what requirements apply to your particular property. Okay, so uh, what, I'm hearing, what I'm hearing from you then is uh, specifics really, that the area is specific, so it really depends on where you're investing? Absolutely, like for, both for licensing and planning because the rules can be, I mean even if you look at the London market, at the moment there are 21 different additional and selective licensing schemes in place probably covering in excess of 170,000 properties. Many of those landlords still don't realise they're covered by those schemes and run the risk of prosecution if they don't comply. So very important that we get the area right and we know what's actually happening in those areas, um, making sure that we really focus and really niche into specific areas, find out what the legislation is, uh, and uh, really make sure that we've got a sustainable business. So that, that makes sense, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so that's for HMOs. Um, how about the, the new flavour on this, uh, of, the, of, the, of the month, should I say, the flavour of the year, when it comes to property, uh, short-term accommodation? Any pointers that you've got for people that are looking to get into short-term accommodation, which can be a great uh, investment strategy where you're accelerating your investment, you're actually accelerating your return on investment. What would you, how can you help people with that? What can you assist with? Well, well, I think short-term service accommodation is not my specialist area, but, but I think from, from my involvement in property, there's a couple of key issues I would flag up. One of which is, if the property is going to be mortgaged, it's going to make, is, is making sure that the mortgage actually covers the intended use. So if it's an, a buy-to-let or a, an HMO mortgage or a commercial mortgage, does it actually allow that property to be let out for short-term lets? Because it's really important to get that right. And that's a key point because um, some councils, they will actually check, won't they, uh, whether the lender is the correct lender, what the lender's criteria is. They'll actually write to them sometimes as well. And it can be uh, something that um, people actually get caught out on um, by making uh, it's, so it's important that they actually make sure that they know what they're getting into and that what they're getting into is very good. So uh, a key point, right, to make sure that people, uh, investors, get the business right right from the beginning. Uh, and how about um, buy to let? Um, what are your thoughts on buy to let when it comes to legislation? Uh, how are you finding that? Are you finding that there's more legislation, less legislation? Uh, what have you found um, that's been happening over the last year or so? What's going to happen? I, I think landlords are seeing a, a steady stream of new legislation coming into being. Um, some of those powers, realistically, for normal uh, residential accommodation, have been there over the last 10 years. Things like the housing, health, and safety rating system, making sure the property is free of hazards. It's, it's safe. Obviously, you've got the new smoke and carbon monoxide alarm regulations. Um, there, there are some new provisions coming in in 2017 through the Housing and Planning Act. There's going to be new powers around 
civil penalty notices uh, where councils will be able to issue a civil penalty to landlords who don't comply rather than potentially taking them to court. And for the very worst offenders, which in my opinion all landlords want removed from the sector, councils will be able to apply for a banning order, actually stopping those landlords or letting agents from operating in the future. So that there's more and more regulation coming through, but the basics are still the same, providing safe, warm, decent accommodation, keeping the tents happy. So it seems like councils are becoming even more strict uh, with their criteria, um, and they really seem to be policing uh, landlords better, uh, more so. Mm. And, and rightly so, because there's so many people out there, isn't there, where they're misinformed, they don't really have the information, the correct information, and by attending events like this, Premier Property Club, uh, here at uh, Premier Wolf, and uh, our Premier Property Clubs that we run in and around London, people can become informed, can't they? So, wonderful to have you here. Now, our next event, for those of you who are wondering when our next event is, is actually September the 27th, at Premier Property Club in Canary Wharf. So, we'll have another key expert, just like Richard, be sharing information, and I will be there myself as well, um, sharing um, opinions and ideas on what we're actually doing in investment. So, you can actually come along and be more informed. You can network with like-minded individuals. So, I look forward to seeing you on the 27th of September at Canary Wharf Premier Property Club. If you want to come along, the link is just below. Simply just click on that and you can book your ticket. My name is Cameron Devady. Look forward to speaking with you soon.